viewers of the Philippines, good afternoon. It is 1 in the afternoon, Tuesday, May 7 at San Mateo Municipal College. Today, we will be exploring the timeless tale of Dr. Jose Rizal, shedding the lights on his life and contributions bounded by the backdrop of contemporary social issues. From his literary masterpiece to his intense advocacy for social justice, Rizal's legacy continues to resonate in today's world, where issue of inequality, education system, poverty, and political dynasty persist. As we explore how Rizal's teaching remain relevant in navigating the challenges of our time, let's take away our main headlines, political corruption, poverty, education system and environment issues, gender inequality, language issues. On the live side, let's hear from Mr. Romney Kuragay, Philippine Corruption. Romney. Thank you, Mikaela. A journal from the Philippine Star, the Philippine ranks as 115th in Corruption Index Worldwide. Corruption is an undying obstacle a country may face and can be a cause of its slow growth. In the works of Dr. Jose Rizal, particularly in the Noli Metangere, Rizal portrays the corruption that existed in the Philippines during the Spanish colonial period. And as of today, it is still happening and is still just getting worse. So not during our life, lifetime we'll be able to solve corruption. Ang corruption po ngayon sa Pilipinas ay nagiging endemic. Ang corruption po ngayon sa Pilipinas ay nagiging parang fashion. Becomes a fad. Because money becomes power. And if you have power, ay eh talagang kailangan ano yun, sikat ka. Tumataas po ang incidence ng corruption sa bawat ahinsa ng gobyerno at magugulat po kayo. Mayroong mga departamento ng gobyerno na hindi nyo akalain ay kurap, akala nyo natutulog, pero mas kurap pala yon sa ibang ahensya ng gobyerno na akala nyo ay kurap. In January 19, 2024 at 12.45pm, the Sandigan Bayan proved that Estrada is found guilty of plunder and bribery. This shows us that those who have power are being blinded by the money the people have. They are taking it all to themselves. Do, do, not, uh, do not tell us that we are uh, corrupt. I'm not, I'm not saying you are corrupt. What I'm saying here is, meron pong mga tao dyan sa loob ng inyong organization. I'm not saying you are corrupt. I'm saying there are people there that are not doing their job or maybe they're involved in corruption. This is Romney K. Karagay. Hand on the news. Real Zalashon. Back to you, Mikaela. Thank you, Mr. Karagay. Now let's talk about the crisis of educational system with Ms. Rona. Ms. Rona? Thank you, Ms. Mikaela. For decades, our country is facing many problems in education system and environment such as infrastructure deficiency, insufficient classroom, lack of libraries, outdated facilities, and lack of resources. This has been shown in different studies and journals, such as the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS and Camellia Homes Block. sa grade 11 student na si Alisa, malaking tulong ang K-12 para mahasa ang kanyang kaalaman at skills. Na-enhance po yung speaking skills ko po. Ganun po. And yung critical thinking ko po. Kasi po more on math po siya. Eh pag math po, parang ina-enhance yung critical thinking and your analyzing po namin. Sa kamera, inihain ni Senior Deputy Speaker at ating Pangulo Gloria Macapagal Arroyo ang panukala para sa K plus 10 plus 2. Kung saan gagraduate na sa high school pag natapos sa grade 10 ang estudyante o tulad ng dati na hanggang 4th year high school lang. Optional na lang ang grades 11 at 12 na kukunin lang ng mga gustong tumuloy sa kolehiyo. Batay raw kasi sa iba't ibang pag-aaral at resulta ng mga survey, hindi anya nasunod ang layunin ng K-12 na maging employable o mabigyan ng trabaho ang grade 12. Dr. Jose Rizal has a very famous quote saying, Ang kapataan, ang pag-asa ng bayan, means that children are the hope and future of a country. The current issue of education system is making it harder for most of the students to find studying a lot of more difficult. And that is my report. This is Rona Armonia, Head on the News Resolution. Back to you, Micaela. Thank you, 
for that information, Ms. Rona. Now, for the issue of poverty, let's know more from Ms. Rodin Morales. Ms. Rodin? Thank you, Michaela. Poverty is one of the most controversial issues in the Philippines that have been dealing for many decades. The latest data from the Philippine Statistic Authority, PSA, show that the country's poverty rate is already declined to 22.4% in the first half of 2023 from 23.7% in the same period in 2021. In the novel of Rizal, No Limit Tangere, poverty is an issue already. It is a hydrants and is being cause of many other problems, such as malnutrition, low rate of educated people, low employment rate, and other issues that may lead to a country's low age. And this is Roger May Morales, head of the news to the solution. Head back to you, Michaela. I believe with your report, Ms. Roden. Now let's hear more about gender inequality crisis from Ms. Angela, Jasmine, and Dan. Ms. Angela? Thank you, Michaela. Talking about gender equality, every one of us have the power to achieve peaceful society. Gender equality must have equal enjoyment, both women and men, of socially valued goods and opportunities. As a result, it is an important part of building gender equality in focusing and resolving women to have responsibility to manage their own lives. Malaya na ang mga estudyante na magsuot ng uniforme base sa kanilang gender identity. Ayon sa pamunuan ng PLM, layo ng bagong polisiya na paigtingin ang pagiging safe space ng PLM. All men are born equal. As a result from this letter to the young women of Malolos. Did you know that the women are being discriminated long before the foreign colonization? They are being treated unequally and low. This idealism is not relevant and necessary in today's generation. Lots of women are proving that gender has nothing to do with their capacity of doing things that a man can do. This quote of Rizal is indeed a meaningful line to all. And this is Angela, Jasmine, and Dan head on the news resolution. Head back to you, Michaela. Thank you, Angela, for wonderful and informative details about gender equality in our beloved country. We all deserve to be loved and treated right, despite of our social status and identity. Now, let me take you for our last hottest issue in the Philippines. The language of our country is being debated for years, as well as the approaches the school may use. High in the mountains of central Philippines, the Aitas chant their worships to their gods. They pray for a bountiful harvest and protection for their way of life. They recite in their ethnic language Aitamag Indi, but these words are increasingly known only to the tribal elders. Lori Tukark Abuke is one of those elders. Over 100 years old, he and his wife are considered living chronicles of their people's past. Nothing in their school books, they say, is written of the tales of their ancestors. Across the Philippines, in remote areas like this one, indigenous languages continue to be spoken. However, government anthropologists say that within a generation, over 50 of these languages will cease to exist. To unify the curriculum, the government has mandated the use of mother tongues, but only just 12 of 175 languages spoken in the Philippines will be taught. And other lessons will take place only in English and Philippines. But with no cohesive plan to preserve less commonly used tongues, the Ministry of Education admits part of the country's heritage may soon vanish. For now, Lori and his wife share the journeys of their ancestors while they can hoping that their story, unlike their words, may not have lost its meaning. Thank you for watching. We will never stop in serving you with Will and Fox News. I am Micaela F. Romero, and this is Resolution. Head on the News Resolution.